That's what I'm going to talk to us about today. The raw materials for creating. You, you, must start, hey, hey, you must start creating things in this church. You can't be normal. You can't. I was with, uh, you know, my dear friend, Apostle Chris Matebula, Nikki van der Vest is in, uh, uh, I think, uh, Apostle Prophet Gebhard, uh, Gebhard, and who else? Um, Apostle Eden Constance. Um, I can't remember who else was in that room. And we were all sitting and, and talking. And I said to them, I, I want my wife to go and deliver in the United States. <laughs> Apostle Chris Matebula said, only Phyllis can think like that. <laughs> only what? Felix can think like that. You must think out of the box. I mean, look, my son is in the U.S., He's schooling. And I know the torture it takes to pay his school fees. Even though he's on scholarship, the scholarship pays some and I pay some. It's still heavy. Now, if he was a U.S. citizen, I wouldn't be paying that. So I thought, before David is born, let me make his way. You are not hearing me. <laughs> Hannah had an interview the other day. Hannah is here. She is here. She had a Aura Robot University called her. They had an interview and they told her the school fees is $58,000 a year. Hannah said to me, that is a lot of money. Because she, I told, she knows exchange rate run to dollar. She knows. Amen, somebody. Amen. Some of your children, you have not even told them about Zimbabwean dollar. They need to know that there is a US dollar. There is a pound sterling. And you are not hearing me, somebody. You know, it's a lack of exposure that has blinded the church. We don't think beyond where we are. And that's why great things are happening out there. We are not part of it. Big things are going on. Transactions. Businesses. All kinds of men, transactions are going on all around the world. And we just sit in church praying in tongues. And then nothing else. Uh -uh. May your Christianity not end up in praying in tongues. Your amen is wicked. I say, may your Christianity not end up in praying in tongues. Abba, somebody needs to manufacture something. Somebody needs to run a multi-billion dollar business. Am I talking to believers? Somebody, you must think bigger than where you are. I don't think normal. No. No. Stop thinking normal. You have God on your side. You can't be thinking like every other person. Think out of the box. What can I do to change my environment? What can I do for me to be different? What can I do? So please, I want to encourage you. Make sure that these messages you are hearing, you go and listen to them again and let God get you pregnant. You are not hearing me this moment. Look at your neighbor, whether they are a man or a woman, say, get pregnant. Mm, get pregnant. Get pregnant. Many of you are barren. You refuse to get pregnant. And you can get pregnant of destiny. You can get pregnant of vision. And let me tell you, the moment you get pregnant and not shut that baby in your womb, you one day, that baby will come out physically. Are you hearing me this morning? I, you know, I don't preach message to impress you. I'm, I'm too old for that now. When I come, you will know I'm home. Because you, you, need, you need some... We, we are too... No. Uh -uh. <laughs> As I travel around, I'm like, Lord, help the church. Help us, Lord. When are we going to start? We are sleeping. We are sleeping. You get to the United States, you see, listen, <laughs> I know the only people you hear is Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. You, get, you see billionaires everywhere. Ep I'm talking, be what? Everywhere. This company has existed, is owned by this guy, that billion, I mean in billions. Apostle, is it about money? It's not about money. 
church listen part of your dominion mandate is that you need to own what your father has given to you it's not a we we don't we're not doing we're not serving god because we want money but the truth is that we need it for the advancement of the gospel the reason why satan is advancing his course higher than christianity is because they have more money than us do you know that yeah they can put somebody will go to the tv and sponsor pornography for three billion dollars meanwhile you are struggling with 20 rand how do you sponsor the gospel it, it, you, you saw, that's why i <laughs> you know i was preaching for apostle nikki van der Vesen. i said I, I am tired of all this rema. It's a pay, uh, uh, such a rema. What did you do with the rema? I am tired of preaching rema. Do the one I have preached. Let me see a change in your life. Let me see your marriage do well. You and your wife living in peace. Let me even see that first. You are receiving rema and your house is WWE. What kind of rema is that? That's not rema. Rema is something, revelation changes your life. <laughs> what did I say? Revelation changes. Anytime God wants to do anything in your life, the first thing he does is give you revelation. And when you act on that revelation, the Holy Ghost will go into action. Revelation. So you must start, you know what, what oh boy. What's, who was that? Habakkuk. In chapter 2 of Habakkuk verse 1, he says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower and I will watch and wait to see what he will say to me when I'm reproved. And the Lord said, write the vision and what? Make it plain upon tables so that he that read it will run with it. He said the vision is yet for an appointed time. But even though it tarries, wait for it. For what? It shall not tarry, but it shall come to pass. I, I seriously, something needs to change. Something needs to change. Practical Christianity. So that we stop living the way we are living. It's not, it's not working. For me, I just think the church is playing games. And we need to wake up. Say amen to that. Oh, thank you, Father. Lift up your hands and just give God thanks. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your word that we are about to receive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you did in Dubai. Thank you for what you did in the U.S. Thank you, Father. To you alone be the glory. Blessed be God. Somebody just pray in the Holy Ghost. Mede bromo shenge velika mese velita Mande proke shombele ke vrende ke velika bratos ko beletosa Thank you Jesus Mako tale manana ma shata yana ma E brondele beke je vrende ke velika toze brendosi Ambre ko jobele ke bramba bayada bobo dombe ke de brandiza Imbra ko jombe ke teli valamante kredia vele mantosi Ambre toko shabal ambre ke deli gavraga bade ke yete Mente crevejo balante credia vele mandole. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you. We worship you, Father. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Oh, worship his holy name. Ah, Jesus. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. Oh, worship his holy name. Somebody sing it one more time. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Jesus. Oh, my soul. Let us worship. His holy name. Mm, we sing like never before. Oh, my soul, oh, worship His. 
Thank you, Lord, this morning. Speak to us, Father. Speak like you spoke in Genesis chapter 1. Speak like how you created. Speak to our spirit this morning. Let us arise. Father, arise and let your enemies be scattered. My Father, arise this morning. Let the enemies of your people be scattered. In the name of Jesus. We need and we want and desire your glory. In Jesus' name and the church say, Amen. Amen. All right. I want to talk to us about the raw material for creating. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Did God need any bank loan? Talk to me. In this statement, is there any bank loan involved? Was there an engineer involved? Was there a medical doctor involved? Everybody read it one more time. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Next verse. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord was upon the face of the waters. Next verse. And God said, let there be light. And there was what? Light. If you keep reading, God kept saying, let there be. Let there be. And the Bible says at the end of all the let there be, God saw everything that he said. Amen. Say amen to that. Um, I, uh, I, I have taught and taught and, and what I'm going to say to you today is something that I've lived by. Uh, let, let me share something that happened in the U.S. So when we were going, when we flew out from Dubai, so I had a certain amount of dollars um, that I needed to pay. I was thinking, let me pay my wife's hospital bill, settle everything that needs to be settled so that I can come back. And I know that that's all sorted. Because I mean, we don't have medical insurance in the United States. So anything we do is out of pocket. And so I had a certain amount of dollars in thousands, okay? So when we got there, we got to the hospital. They told us that for my wife to deliver is 45,000 for normal birth. And uh, uh, Caesarea is $60,000. I immediately calculated by 19 on the average. My head spin 360 degrees. <laughs> I knew that I had to use faith. Uh -uh, you are not hearing me. <laughs> are you here this morning? You see, I want to talk about practical Christianity this morning. You have been hearing theory. I want you to leave the realm of theory to the realm of what? Practical. And so, when they told us this price, <laughs> I looked at my wife, I said, baby, let's live here before my blood pressure goes up. And we went to another hospital. Obviously, I had prayed and I said, Lord, let this money that I am with cover everything that my wife needs to do in the U.S. It was not even half of what, it is not even near half of what they are asking for. So we went to another hospital. The money is in my pocket. As I'm in the car, I'll pray in tongues a little bit. And then I will speak inside, you know. <laughs> we got to this hospital. And this lady said to us, they are cheaper. But theirs is $26,000. I said, that is still a lot of money. $26,000 times 19. If you calculate it, your destiny will not remain the same. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, and I said, ma'am, isn't there any form of discount or what can be? I'm a Nigerian. We negotiate everything. That's how we are born. It, it, the only, you know, 
the, when I came into South Africa, I went into spa. I bought grocery. I wanted to tell them, do you negotiate price? That's how we are. We were, you don't walk into a shop in Nigeria, they tell you something is five rand, you pay five rand. No. Even the shop owners know that you will negotiate, so they increase the price. Are you hearing me? All right. So, I said, isn't there a way? He said, you know, we can give 75% discount if you pay now. Hey. I said, calculate it immediately with immediate effect. It was calculated. Then I paid instant. Listen to me from today. Anything you desire is coming to you. What is wrong? Stop complaining. There is a way out. Look at your neighbor say there is a way out. Oh yeah. You may not have what it takes but God will give you what it takes. I said God will make a way for you. I just said God will make a way for you. Are you hearing me somebody? So my wife's hospital bill is paid. As I speak. On 75. Is it 75 or 77 percent discount? What are you talking about? So I want to tell you how. Are you interested? Yeah. Is anybody here interested? Yeah. All right. Let's begin first. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Let's read. Before I go into the book of Genesis. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Come on, give it to us quickly. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with how many? Some. Many. A few. How many? All spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. He has blessed us with all spiritual. Somebody say all spiritual. All spiritual. Blessings. That means that the wisdom you need to be a billionaire, God has given it. Yeah. What it would take you to get married in 2024, God has given it. Yeah. What it would take you to own a building without money, God has given it. Yeah. Give me First Peter or Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Second Peter 1. And verse 3, quickly. Second Peter 1 and verse 3. Glory to God. According to his divine power, had given unto us how many? How many things? All things that pertain unto what? And what else? Godliness. Through the knowledge of him that had called us unto glory and virtue. God has given. And this is where the problem is. The fact that God has given and yet we don't have it means there is a disconnect. Let me show you what I mean. I need uh, bro uh, Brother Gerald, come. I need somebody that is far shorter than Brother Gerald. Okay. Well, Pastor Gagey, you are not that short, but uh, come. You will do the job. Come on the altar. Come on the altar. So, uh, come. Let everybody see you. Come on that. Yeah. Pastor Gagey, please stay in, his, in front of him. All right. So, this is you. Um, I should have actually added one more, but it's fine. Because that one more is your soul. So, Pastor KG is a body, physical body, that you see every day. He stands on this pulpit to preach. He's married to Dickiness Gladness. They have a baby, baby Adese, and another one coming on the way in the next few days. All right. You know him. He's a pastor in the church. This is the one you know. But Pastor KG, the real Pastor KG, is this one. Who is the spirit? And when God said, I have blessed 
Pastor KG with how many? All. all spiritual blessing. He didn't bless him here. The blessing are here. And so every day now, Pastor KG comes to church and says, Father, give me. And God is saying, boy, this your prayer is meaningless. Because what you are asking for, I have given here. Are you here with me? I have given you all that pertain to life and godliness. So now, that's why for us as Christians, we don't live life from outside in. We live life from inside what? Out. That's why the real you is inside you. Listen, Pastor KG has wisdom. All wisdom that he needs to be a great man. He has every spiritual wisdom. He has all the blessing. He has all the favor. He has everything that he needs to fulfill destiny. It's all loaded here. Now, all he needs to know is how do I pull this thing that is on the inside? Because church, listen, Jesus has two residential address. Number one is the throne. Number two is inside you. You are not hearing me. The Holy Ghost has two residents. One is on the earth and the other one is where? Inside you. The Bible says Christ in you is what? The hope of glory. For ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. All those things are loaded here. Now, son, all these things are all yours. But here he is. Many of these things he doesn't have physically. And he's trying to wonder, how do I get these things out from here and pull it to here for everybody to see? That's what I want to talk to you about. The raw materials for creativity. The raw materials for creation. Because as long as you keep looking outside, oh, my blessing is there. My blessing is in that bank. My blessing is in that church. My blessing is in that place. My this is there. My, uh -uh. The thing is inside you. You can pull it out. It's inside you. So I'm going to give you the process. Just from Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3. Thank you, sir. You may go back to your seat. Put your hands together for the Lord. The first thing I want to talk about today is vision. Vision, or what you call dream, or what you call thoughts. Uh, God-given thoughts. Or what you think. You remember Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says, Unto him that's able to do exceeding, come on, abundantly, come on, above all that you ask or what or think so that means that there are two prayer warriors in your life the first one is your physical prayer the second one is your thoughts your thoughts are prayer that's why you must be god inside conscious listen listen Felix, calm down my body is hot today i you know if it was possible, I would break your head and put what I'm about to say. Physically, not the one I'm speaking. Church, <laughs> thoughts and vision. You must be God inside. You know, <laughs> I told you guys the story of one of my friends that came here, a pastor. He said he met with some pastors and they told him that this Felix... They don't believe everything he's doing is God. He's, he's using muti. He's, uh, he's using something. You know, any man that can say that is Satan inside conscious. Because you believe Satan can do what is going on in House of Treasures and not God. That is madness. When you are God conscious on the, you create a God atmosphere around you. God consciousness, God's atmosphere inside you, then you now know why the Bible says greater is he that's where? 
inside of you than he that's in the world. So you, you must be conscious of the God inside of you. And what that creates is vision. You begin to think God's thoughts. You begin to dream God's dreams. You begin to see things God's way. And, and you know, like the scripture I quoted earlier in Habakkuk 2.1, he said, write the vision and make it play. The dude was waiting on God for a thought. He was waiting on God for an idea. Because that, that we see, everything begins with vision. This church you are here sitting down right now began with what? Vision. If there was no vision, this place would not be here. Are you here, church? You see, church, things are created twice. Talk to me. Things are created how many times? Twice. The first one is created where? And then it will manifest outside. That's how the realm of the spirit works. Even in the natural the church, this building was built twice. Are you here? I'm talking physical now, not spiritual. Built how long? Uh, twice. All right. How did that happen? So when we wanted to build, we called an architect. And he drew the building. The only thing he did when he did the drawing, he didn't add the bookstore and the toilets in front. I added those. And I, I, we had to add it to go submit to city of Jobek for approval. So, church, now, if you destroyed this building today, you didn't destroy the building. <laughs> because the plan is in my office. Here inside the office. You didn't destroy the building. Because I can repeat the exact same thing that is inside. You are not hearing me, church. Somebody shall vision. You, you need to begin to see God. What is God saying to you? What have you left behind that God has told you to start? Vision. People can't see. Church people can't see. He said the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus will shine upon them. What can you see? Can you see yourself married? Are you here, church? Can you see yourself in greatness? I knew I was going to fly around the world. I started seeing it when I was in Bible school, in my early 20s, that I was going to be going all around the world preaching the gospel. I saw it then vision and I began to prepare for it somebody shout vision look at your neighbor say vision you must have vision vision is powerful church vision is what powerful vision is powerful so anything you can visualize as long as you nurture it you nurture it great people will tell you that whatever they have built that's why if you look at many great people, they don't panic when you take anything from them. They don't. Really, if you hang around billionaires, take all their money, they are not worried. You know why? The vision that made the money is inside them. That you can't steal. You are not hearing me, church. <laughs> vision. Somebody shall vision. Paint a picture of your future. Become pregnant today. What are you pregnant with? When my wife told me we were in, I think we went on holiday in, uh, in Santorini and we got to Paris. As we got to Paris, my wife started vomiting. I said, ah, uh Kilo -uh. Why are you vomiting? Ah, you just eat food. <laughs> I said, no, something is going on here. <laughs> I said, baby, are you, are you okay? 
He said, no, I'm not. We went to buy a pregnancy test. <laughs> and we tested. She went to the bathroom, brought it out, didn't even speak to me. She just dropped it and walked away. I took it. I said, baby, what's the meaning of this? He said, you can't see. I said, I can't. I can't read. I'm not a woman. What is your problem? I've never done pregnancy tests before. He said, if the line is this side, is you are pregnant. I said, baby, are you pregnant? <laughs> Hello, church. From that day, I had the vision that this boy was going to be born in the United States. Are you here? I had a vision. I had a vision. And I kept it, and we started planning towards it. Now, she has, she's now that side, and all the things that are needed for that to happen is sorted. Somebody shout vision. This church was a vision, and today, it has manifested and is showing forth all over the world. It was John that was saying that the things that our eyes have seen. Give me 1 John chapter 1 verse 1. The things that our eyes have seen. Our eyes have handled of the word of life. Our, we didn't just see. Somebody say vision. He said that which was from the beginning which we have heard. Somebody say we heard. Somebody shout we heard. Because one of the things that gives birth to vision is words that you hear. Words birth vision. He said, that which we have heard and which our eyes have seen and which we looked upon, not just that, our hands physically have it. You are going to physically have some things after this service. Our hands have handled. This is where my problem is because we are hearing. Many of us are seeing, but many can handle. And that is not practical. Something is wrong with that equation. We need to handle what we have heard, what we have seen. Handle it, feel it. It is possible. It is possible. Do you want to know how to build a house? With no money. Uh -uh, nobody said amen. Do you want to know how to start a 10 million rent business without borrowing a cent from Arsa? Do you want to know how to give birth to a child without a womb and a fallopian tube? Uh -uh, let me talk to this side. Do you, know, you, do you want to know how to create your world in the midst of all that is going on? Like the economy will be gyrating and you don't feel it. You have no idea that there is, a, there is an economic problem. Because you live in another world that you have created for yourself. I, uh, I, I don't know who I'm talking to. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtain a good report. The Bible says we understand that by faith, the words were framed by the word of God. So that the things which we see were not made from things which do appear. They were not made from physical things. These are the raw materials God used to create the where you are today vision he thought we need to have an earth and he said to them hey god the father son and the holy ghost we need to create an earth and so in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void so the first raw material is vision what did i say somebody shout it Look at your neighbor say, do you have a vision? Today, get pregnant with vision. I say, get pregnant with vision. You want to own a salon? You can own it. You want to build a house unemployed? You can build it. Because you see, I, I don't, I don't want to talk to you based on physical things. Because you see, the moment I talk about physical things, you will be limited. 
I'm telling you, we've done insane things in this church without money. When, this, when God told us to build this building, there was 88 rand in the church account. How much? 88 rands. I'm not lying before the God I serve. And we are building a building that time that will cost us 16 million. Was it the money? No. I began to speak. Building, you need to come forth. One of the days, I had a dream. And I saw, I saw me preaching in a building. And the building had the previous color that we had before they painted it gray. And it had that color. The only thing is that it had like balconies, you know, at, you know like how it is in, uh, um, not, ba no, uh, what's this casino place in Omondi? Gold Reef, in their, their theaters. You know, they have these cubicles where people can sit on top. So it had that cubicle all around it. I saw that building. And it, it, something was conceived on the inside. I knew that I was pregnant with a building. Whether there was money or not, I was pregnant. All he needed to do is incubate the pregnancy, take care of the pregnancy, nurture the pregnancy, in due course. Apostle, how long? We all have different times. It depends on what you are pregnant of. A rabbit gives birth in three months. Are you here? We used to have rabbits here. You all remember them? That runs around everywhere. Some of you, I don't know if you stole some and went to cook Sunday lunch because they just disappeared. Amen, somebody. I don't know what happened to them. But those things give birth in what? Three months. A human being gives birth in what? Nine months. An elephant gives birth in two years. So it depends on what you want to give birth to. If you want to give birth to a rabbit, it's okay. Three months, give birth. Some of us are elephant. Aya. By the time we give birth, what we give birth to that is one day old is, is far bigger than yours that is 10 years old. Are you hearing me? <laughs> are you here, church? Church, get pregnant. Look at your neighbor say, get pregnant. Pregnant. Mm. Some of you ladies will understand this message more. Some of you who have gotten pregnant and gave birth, you will understand that no matter what the devil does, no matter the pain you feel, no matter how, how it, it feels bad, you can't sleep on this side. My wife bought a long pillow that she has to adjust this, adjust here, but after nine months, a baby is coming out of me. You are not hearing me. I said the baby is coming out of you this year. I said the baby is coming out of you this year. Ah, Jesus. It's time to get pregnant. It's time to get pregnant. I, 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 don't, want, I don't want barren Christians all over me. I don't get pregnant with something. Give birth to something. Let the devil know that, hey, Boy, I am taking in. Pregnancy is not easy. You know, God is very humorous. You know how God made, <laughs> you know, many women, how many of you have given birth here? Raise your hand. You know, my wife's uh, baby shower that her friends organized for her, one of the pastors, Pastor Howard's wife, said, she was telling her testimony and said, you know, when she was in labor, she was in pain. They told Howard, this baby is not coming. Let's do Caesar. Howard says, Apostle Howard says, no, my wife is like the Hebrew women. She, said, look, she looked at Howard and said, look at this idiot. <laughs> so I am in pain. You want me to die so you can marry another woman? <laughs> because labor is not a joke. I, women, are you here? Labor is not a joke. It's not. But you see how you get pregnant you know, God knows, God is, how many women, they, when, they, when they want to give birth, the pain they feel, they will be like, ah, I will never try this again. Never. Never. I will never. But you see, the process of getting pregnant, God put sugar in it. 
The process is sweet. Elema <laughs> Kayaboza. So that by the time the woman gives birth, she will say, I will never. Then she goes back home. And Sibusiso shows up. <laughs> and she remember, it is sweet. And she did that thing that is sweet. Not knowing that that thing that is sweet is going to lead to another pregnancy. That will carry pain. Uh -uh, you are not here. So, so, God is a humorous God. You know, God is very wise. God, that's where all these pharmacists, they learned all these things, how to do medication. Do you know that many of the pills, they hide the bitterness in sugar or in capsules? Or Some of the baby, you know, those years, I remember when Hannah and Keon used to be sick. Sometimes I taste, I like some of their medicine. It's so sweet because I'm a sweet tooth. I just take a spoon. <laughs> Because they're sweet. But inside that sweetness is what? A bitter medicine that will heal you. And that's why, church, carrying pregnancy is not easy. But you need to get pregnant. You can't give birth to anything if you are not pregnant. You can't wake up now one morning and say, I'm going to the hospital, I'm in labor, you have not been pregnant for nine months. And you say, when you get there, doctors will look at you and say, are you okay? But that's how it is spiritually. Many of us want to give birth naturally with things that we have not been pregnant with. Are you here, church? You cannot. It does not work like that. It doesn't. So get a vision. If you don't have one, take a cue from Prophet Habakkuk. I will stand upon my watch. What did I do? I will set myself upon the towers. That means I will go into prayer. Build a relationship with God. Because you get this vision through worship. Through prayer. Say amen somebody. Amen. Through your, your fellowship with God and the Holy Spirit. Are we here church? Through that fellowship you build a vision. God will begin to show you things and show you where you're supposed to be. Say amen somebody. Amen. God will show you who you are. Because that's how God is. He gives you a vision. Everything you see today, both in the movie industry, in Hollywood, in Nollywood, in Bollywood, all those things first, they learn them from God. When they write a movie, they learn it is a vision. Somebody paints a vision. So listen, church, this has nothing to do with where you are now. You can be earning 2,000 rents and carry a pregnancy of a billion dollars. Uh, I wish I had people in church. It's not about where you are now. Stop thinking, oh, I work in McDonald's, I earn five rent. That has nothing to do with vision. You can get pregnant of an elephant while you are working with rats. Are you here, church? What's my time? Oh, man, time is going. Somebody have a vision. Somebody shall vision. The second thing, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Let's keep reading. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Come on now. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Next verse. And the Bible said the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. The second raw material you need is the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit. This is the one that brings everything to fruition. The Bible says, and the Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God. So, you see, for instance, in a movie, when they write script of movies, those of you who are in the movie industry, they write the movie from the beginning. They write it but the first thing they write is the end. So they have a picture of the end. That's why actors never die in most movies. 99% the actor is alive. In fact, 99.999% the actors are alive at the end of the movie. No matter what they go through. Because when the creator of that movie, the writer, the visionaire, 
when he started writing that movie, he wrote the end first. And then now begins from the beginning so that they can get to the end. That's exactly how God made you. God has written everything about you before you were born. And what he wrote is the end. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 7 says, I, I come in the, vo the song you guys always sing, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. So, so that means that everything that you will go through has been documented. I don't think you guys believe me. Let, let me use you guys again. Come back. Please come back. Come back. All right. So, stay there. You are the end of the movie. Son, come here, Pastor KG. Come here. So, when God wrote about your life, he wrote, this is the end. I know the plan that I have for you, saith the Lord thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future or an expected end. This is the expected end. That's why God never ends in the negative. Listen, no matter what you are going through, it is going to come out well. How many things work together? Are you here? Some of you who are want to commit suicide, eh, eh, you are in the middle of the movie. Don't kill yourself. Are you hearing me? The end is going to be good. This has been documented. This has been archived. Even Jesus, when he came, he said all the things that have been written about me before he came to the earth. So Jesus, everything Jesus was to do was documented. He knew he was to die on the cross. That was his destiny. Can I hear an amen? amen. Isaiah prophesied it 4,000 years before Jesus came. Are you here? Before Jesus was born, Isaiah has said it that he was going to be slaughtered. The Bible says when we see him, we will, not, we will not love his look. We will not. We beheld him smitten, stricken, and forsaken of God. He said, but he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. He said when we see him or when we behold him, there is nothing comely about him. Nothing. But those things were documented. Now, here you are. You begin your life from Pastor KG. And by the time you are with you are Pastor KG, you start life, things start going towards your expected end. You get here. Now, in every movie, now, in this movie, that is the expected end that has been documented. Pastor KG is the main actor. In the movie of your life, you are the main actor. Yeah. Are you here, church? Yeah. He is the main actor of his life. Now, in every movie, you know that there is not only one actor. There are many actors. Okay, so, Pastor Lily, come. Dickiness, come. All the, the, the yeah. Come, come. These are, these are all the... All the actors, okay, that are, you know, there are some people that are actors, they just bring them in. Those years, I used to watch Generation. Some people, they don't even act, they just walk past. They are all part of the movie. All those people that are walking past, is a, they are, is a, it's not natural. The cameraman told them, walk now. So, here he is, an actor. One of the actors, Pastor KG, we need. Is Dickiness Gladness. So, he has Dickiness Gladness as one of his actors. And that's an actor that will follow him to the end. But here are other actors. This one is a government official that will give him a tender for 10 billion. He's an actor or she's an actor. Are you here, church? Okay, this one is another... Okay, let's, we're going to use you as negative now. Okay, so this is another actor that is a backbiter and a gossiper. 
Uh -huh. So now, Pastor KG is angry that a gossiper is talking about him. Somebody wrote something on social media about him that is not right. And he's angry. He's so angry, he wants to kill himself. They, they, there is a dude called Eric Rick. Ricky Rick. That killed himself for cyber what? Bully. So, that guy, he did not know that part of the, his actors were cyber bully. But he ended his life because of cyber bully. So, here he is, there is a backbiter. Now, all, all Pastor KG needs to do is, I don't need this one. And let me tell you, in every movie, it's not everybody they employ to act that stay to the end. So what do they do? They remove, I mean, in those years, I used to watch Generation, I know Connie Ferguson, I know Quinn. Those were two people I really remember. The Quinn used to, even comes here to you, still comes here for our conferences. What's her name? Sophie Ndaba. Yeah, I know them. So let us say this is Queen. Then Queen didn't perform. She was backbiting. And frontbiting. <laughs> and gossiping. So what do they do? They remove her from the scene. And then another actor comes. Connie Ferguson goes and begins to do her job. So this is why, church, in your life, whatever happens from now till the end is all in the script. Listen, if a man abandoned you, divorced you, and left you because he loves another younger girl, relax. It was part of the script. Because that's how God is going to bring another actor that will get you to destiny. Are you hearing me, church? That's how it works. That's how it works. So all these actors are all helping him and then eventually he gets to destination and then he fulfills his destiny and does not lose anything because all of them were programmed. This helped me when I started ministry because nobody can now come to this church and say, you know what, if I stop giving this church, there was a lady that left this church. Oh, Jesus, I told you her story. Mm -hmm. I like her to come around all the time. She, when she left this church, she was so angry. She said, as I leave, this church will fall. And then there was a funeral of somebody she knows that was happening here. And then she came. And she came early because she didn't know the funeral was starting by 10. She came by 9 when me that thing was setting up. So I came out from my office. I was in t-shirt and track pants. I walk, I saw her. And then, you know, they put the screen. Whee! The lights were going. Whee! Because when she was living in church, had no screen. We don't have all these lights at all. And then the chairs were plastic. But the one she's sitting on there is cooler. <laughs> you know, when I saw her, I said, ah, thank God you are. In my heart, I was so happy. I said, thank God you are back. Because where you left us, we are no longer there. Anybody that leaves you, the next time they meet you, they will meet you higher. Ah, uh -uh, you're not saying amen. Anybody that abandons you, the next time they see you, they will meet you greater. In the name of Jesus Christ. I feel an anointing in this place. I tell you, I tell you. Church, all this is going on in his life, but the main actor is still alive. And if he keeps following God, if he keeps following God, never give up. Through rain, through storm, through pain, through cry, through the good and the ugly, a day is going to come where he will end up in his destination. And he will look back at his life and say, I have finished my course. I ran the race. I finished my course and I kept the faith. I did not drop the faith. So don't drop the faith. Preach to your neighbor, say, don't drop the faith. Don't stop believing. Don't stop coming to church. Don't stop everything you are doing. I said, don't abandon God. Because at the end, the vision shall speak. 
Thank you, sons. Thank you. Oh, my God. I, I, I am acting movies today. I didn't plan for all these ones. My God. My God. My God. Mm. And the third thing. Let's close this thing. Are you blessed today? The third thing that you need, raw material that you need, is words. Go back to Genesis 1 and verse 1. Oh, Jesus. Next week, I'm going to be starting a series on dominion. As my custom is, once there is a conference, I take on the conference uh, title and do a series on them before our guest speakers come. Apostle Grace sent me a message while I was in New York, in, uh, in, uh, in Atlanta. It says, man, man of God, I so look forward to being with you, man. It's, we're going to have a great time. Oh, don't miss this conference. Please invite everybody. Invite your enemies. Invite all the witches from your village. Invite them. Oh, we're going to convert witches in this conference. I tell you something. Praise God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Nezves. And the earth was without what? Form. And what else? Void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Nezves. And God said, What are you saying? God said, God saw darkness, saw void, but he said what he wanted. He said what he desired. I've heard a lot of people say this confession thing, they say it and claim it, it doesn't work. You are lying. Not when you are pregnant with something. If you are pregnant, if you release it through your mouth, it's coming to pass. That has always been God's process. You catch a vision or a revelation. You remember the story of... Uh, what is this now? Uh, Ezekiel 37. The Bible says that Ezekiel was taken by the spirit into a valley called what? The valley of dry bones. And then a question came from heaven. Can these bones live? Ezekiel said, ah, God, only you know because this one. Uh, me, watching what I'm seeing, never. God said, eh, eh, you don't understand who you are. <laughs> he said, prophesy. And Ezekiel said, what? I should do what? He said, prophesy. And Ezekiel said, I prophesied as I was commanded. And all of a sudden, there was a noise. There was a shaking. Open your mouth and say something that you desire. Am I talking to somebody? Ah! He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. And there was a noise. What are you saying? Church, Words are power. Don't ever in your life, ever, let me say it again. Don't ever, ever in your life ignore the power of your words. Death and life is where? And the power of the tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. A man will eat good from the fruit of his lips and with the increase of his lips shall his hands be satisfied meaning that what you labor with your hands can be decreased through your mouth or it can be increased through your mouth are you in church today i'm quoting scriptures for you a man is justified by his words and a man is condemned by his words those were the words of jesus all this I don't have. I'm broke. Things are not working. Stop that rubbish. Don't say words are not powerful. Please, I beg you. If you say words are not powerful, go to where somebody died, was killed, you know, and they are burying him right in the funeral by the graveside as they want to let down the casket. Just raise your hand and say, I killed this person. You will not get back home. Just with those words you said, you know you will not get home. Hello? Because those people, they will remove the dead body from the casket. Put you first inside and put the dead body on top of you. And they will bury both of you together. That's how powerful words are. Church, son, listen. You know as you are now, 
I can come and slap him. I'm not going to do that. Just give him, give him a slap. Bah! And he gets angry. Very angry. He, How can daddy do this in service? Daddy slapped me. Daddy did this. I, I, and you, it, it changes your reaction towards me. Now you're angry. Now, church, I can be in America. And I will call Pastor Pomlani. And say, son, you are very stupid. You are hopeless. You are useless. You are... He will get angry exactly the same way as if I slapped him physically. Hello? What was the difference? I spoke words. So that means what actions can do. What action can do, words can do. So I can have a pastor, Benji, who has headache. He goes to take grandpa and he gets healed of headache. And he can come to church. I say, son, be healed in the name of Jesus. And he gets healed with the same words that grandpa can do. Or with the same thing that, you know why? Because the grandpa is a physical medication. But the words I spoke are also medication. It's just that they are spiritual medication. Are you here? So, so he can get healed from the words. And that's why you must never joke with your words. Your words are creative. You will hear me saying to you that a day is coming I will own my own private jet. I am not joking. When this church started, I used to tell you guys, those who were with me, one day we come, we will block the whole Impala, block the whole SWAT cop. They were looking at it. What is this? Man? Look at the number behind us. We were 40, 50. And I would tell them we will block Impala. Now our conferences, police has to come. Because the whole road is blocked. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can speak yourself into wealth. I can never be broke. You have heard me say that. Some of you think when I say I can never be broke, I have a billion in my account. Never. The riches we have is here. Oh, is here. That's all we have. We don't have all those big monies. We don't have those things. Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Give I unto thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Young the guy up and he walked into the temple after years from bed without walking. Church, words are powerful. What are you saying? Your words can create your world. The Bible says we understand Hebrews 11:3. That the words, the eons, the ages, the world we live in was created by the word of God. So that the things you and I see were not made from things which do appear. There was no physical material God used. He used spiritual material that I'm teaching you this morning. Number one is what? Vision. Number two is what? Number three is what? Words. Words speak yourself into success. Men have spoken things. You will hear me say from here to, to uh, the mall, we will buy them off. As we speak, we are buying next door. As we speak. As we speak. Are you here, church? Please, your words are powerful. Stop talking divorce in your marriage. Stop cursing your marriage. Stop cursing your children. Stop cursing your finances. Everything is bad. Things are not going well. I will not come out of this. You want to know how to get out? Speak words. Speak yourself out. Talk yourself out. I will be married this year. Every morning as a beautiful woman, go to the mirror. You say you are beautifully and wonderfully made. This year, your destiny helper will locate you. 
You are talking to yourself, but in the mirror. Your destiny helper will locate you. I mean, I, see, listen, church. The Bible said the race, Ecclesiastes 9 11, the race is not to what? To the swift. Neither bread to all uh, what? Neither bread to the wise. Neither the battle to the strong. Nor riches to men of understanding. Nor favor to men of skill. But time and chance does what? Happen to them all. So it is not the guy that, the woman that is most beautiful that gets married. Is the one that talk themselves in. Listen. Strength does not win the battle. Otherwise, Goliath would have defeated David. What did I say? Strength does not win the battle. It's amazing that men of, uh, men of wisdom, those who have studied, went to Harvard, Yale, went to all these places, and working for people who didn't finish. <laughs> Am I talking down on education? Never. No. That's not what I'm saying. But all I'm saying to you is that it's not, favor is not to men of skill. Not bread to the wise. No. It's not. It's not the guy that is fastest. There is something that God puts on you that makes the difference. If you know how to connect the natural and the supernatural, connect the dots. Some of us will never be where we are today if we couldn't connect them. How? I'm, church, listen. I am not originally South African. I came into this country with 20 rents. I've told you my story. I came in here with 20 rents. I started working for an I First, I had a public phone in the street. The first job I did was cut hair. I cut hair in Elof Street in a shop. Secondly, I had a public phone in the street in La Rochelle. People that know me when I was in public phone are here. From public phone, I got a job with a company in Bramfontein. I got another job as a real estate agent in a company in Chrisville. And then I started my real estate company. By my third year in South Africa, I had made my first one million, legitimately. I'm not talking illegal. I don't do illegal things. Say amen. Legitimately running my own business. Legitimately. That you started small does not mean you... He said, though your beginning may be small, but your latter end shall be greatly increased. People that knew me from there, they became my crazy. Me and him were chasing two friends. My late wife and his wife, Veronica. They were best friends living together. So it's not... I'm not telling you science fiction. People that knew me from then are here. But we talked ourselves into... Hey, one day, my late wife, one day, <laughs> I was speaking to her. She says, man, you are full of words. Because that's all I had. And I would tell her how I would take her around the world. This woman is looking at me. You just bought me Marie Biscuit for birthday. Two rands. 99 cents, two Marie Biscuit. Two rands. That's what I gave as gift. Because I didn't have money. I wrapped it nicely. When I left, she opened it, found out it was Marie Biscuit. You are not hearing me. Ver Where is Veronica? Is she here? Is she in church? Are, are you aware of the Mary Biscuit? Uh -huh. so, see, I'm not joking. But I will talk. Oh. I have words. Me. I, uh... <laughs> you know, my wife now, I, we, the first time I went to a restaurant with her, first date we ever had. Uh, you know, as I faced, I turned my chair. I started, I just faced her. I said, I'm here to marry you. I said, you know, I, I've lived my life. I'm in my 50s now. I'm going to give you the best life ever. And, and, you know, you will enjoy life with me. I want you to labor with me. I want you to carry on from where my late wife stopped. To, uh, take care of the things that, you know. And I started talking, talking. The things I would do. By the time we left the restaurant, she was like butter that was on heat. She has melted everywhere. Me she went to call her spiritual mother and said, Mama Ose, 
I will be married and I don't know why I'm, why I'm marrying. Words. Some of you can't speak. If you don't have money, at least have words. Yeah. Have words. Let me tell you. I told you men respond to their emotions through their eyes. But women respond through what? Their ears. Their ears. Some of you are surprised that a, a woman left you that is rich and went to meet a broke guy. The broke guy talks more than you. You think your money can talk. It's a lie. You can talk. Talk yourself into success. Every day you see us talking. We are talking every day. This auditorium, we declare it filled up. Every empty chair is filled up. We are speaking. And it's coming to pass gradually. A day will come when we will have normal service. There will be queue outside. Queue. But you have to keep speaking. Don't talk yourself down. Talk your way up. These are the three raw materials God used in Genesis 1-1. One, one. one to three. And you can use the same. Just get a vision. This is a vision. Here am I today. My wife is in the United States. About to give birth to David. All expenditure paid. A vision. Are we together, church? Through speaking. The money I had, I spoke to it. May this money will be sufficient. Is what I, I mean, I can't with 60. You know how much is sixty thousand dollars or forty-five thousand? No. That's why I don't despise what you have. You know, many of us have looked at ourselves and said, What is this amount? Jesus wanted to feed five thousand people with uh, five loaves and two fish. Philip said to him, What is this among so many? That's many of us here. Many Philips are here. Moses went to God, cry, Lord, ee, ee, you don't just leave Egypt. The people are crying to me. There is the Red Sea. Pharaoh is behind. God said to him, Stop crying. Shut up. Tell the people that they go forward. And God said, What do you have in your hand? He said, The rod. He said, Whatever you have in your hand right now, stretch it towards the Red Sea. <laughs> See, parted. With what he had in his hand. Some of you are crying when what your deliverance is in your house. You are weeping every night when your answer is with you. But you see, your answer doesn't look like your answer. It looks so small. That's how many of us have operated. And today now we are doing big things. Doing big things. Why? Because whatever we have, we knew that this is the jar of oil. All I need to do is speak to this oil. Father, I thank you. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish. Lord, I thank you. He blessed it and gave it to the disciples. Five loaves and two fish refused to stop. They will break, give to somebody. As they give another one, the one they cut out is replaced. That's how God works. So if you are waiting for 10 billion to start your business, you have failed before you started. Start with the five rand. Okay, let me talk to this side. Start with that little gift you have. Okay, let me talk to the choir. Start with what is in your hands. Start with that rod. Am I talking to somebody? Start with that five loaf and two fish. Start with what you have. Not what we come. Start with what you have. What you have is enough. God never... Listen, this three process, if you look through the Bible, that's all you see. Abraham, God wanted to make this guy a father of many nations. This man can't see that he can even give birth. In fact, he went to God and said, God, you have not given me a child. Is this a liaison of Damascus that will inherit all my blessings? And then God looked at him and said, what is wrong with this boy? God brought him out. Hey, what was that? Took him outside. He said, look at the stars, count them. Somebody shall vision. That's the process. He, he, count, he said, God, I, I, I start, I, by the time I counted 1,000, I can't count anymore. God said, so shall your seed be. Abraham got pregnant. Now today, the whole Christian faith, 
2.8 billion people that are professing Christianity. Abraham is our father. I went to Dubai with all the Muslims that are professing Allah and professing Islam. Abraham is their father. Because they came from Abraham's son, Ishmael. So they are our cousins. Mm. <laughs> Look at your neighbor say, go visit your cousins. <laughs> Some of you need to... <laughs> Jesus. You know, every time I enter Dubai more, I, I don't get... Like, you know when you go to a place, you've been there one, two, three times. I still go there and I'm in awe. I'm in awe. And I'm thinking, my cousins build this. You look at the Baj Khalifa, Jesus. As you are looking, your neck is like this. I mean, this building is incredible. Then we went to this fountain where water dances to the music. I'm like, these are our cousins, man. You guys are clever, man. Jesus Christ. What kind of cousins do I have? Man, you need to get exposed. I command all of you to go for holiday overseas. In Jesus' name. It will change your whole, your whole concept to life. It will change it. Exposure. It will give you vision. Songwriter says, give me vision to know just what to do. Lord, I look to you. I know my help come from. Give me vision. Help me, choir. I've forgotten all day. <laughs> I will love you, Lord, my. Yes, Lord. I will love you, Lord, my sheep. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Man, church, you need to go and see. Some of you need to see vision. I tell you, there are places, you know, I sat in that square, we were in a restaurant, just watching, I was, where that water, the, those of you who have been to Dubai, the water fountain that, that, so they play music, the water dances, it goes up according to the rhythm of the music, and I'm sitting there, I'm eating dinner, Kai, I say, see my cousins, and you are here, you, you just stay in Reese Park, and you think the whole world is. That's why you behave like you are the owner of South Africa. Your pride is on the roof. When you go out there, you will lower your shoulder. You will know you have not achieved anything. It will send you back to prayer. Send you back to your God. When you see what men have built. I'm not talking men that have the Holy Ghost. These are our cousins that operate with natural wisdom. What they have built. It will help you. Church, we need to grow up and be matured Christians. I am tired of Christianity without result. And today I pray, may you enter into the realms of results. Practical Christianity, where you will have proof to show the God you serve. That your hands will handle the things you have heard. The things you have looked upon. And the things that your eyes, your eyes have seen. Are we together, church? Did you receive the word of the Lord? Every head bowed or eyes closed. Nobody looking around. Please, everybody bow your heads. Close your eyes. Please, I want to make an important call. This for me is the most important part of this service. You are here this morning. You say, Apostle Felix. I am not born again. Listen, this whole thing begins with Jesus coming inside your life. You say, I'm not born again. I've not made Jesus the Lord of my life. I don't know how to do this. That's why we are here. We are here to lead you to him. 
He said, Apostle, pray for me and pray with me. I would like to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. A man is born twice. Just like I said to you that buildings are built twice. Every one of us must be born twice to make it to heaven. The first birth is the one your mother gave birth to you. But the second one is the one you are going to do today. Where you are born by the Spirit. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh this world. Today you are going to be born of God. You say, Apostle, pray for me. I'm not born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. If that is you, you want my prayer, you want us to lead you to this Jesus we profess and speak about, raise your hand up. Let me pray for you quickly. Thank you, ma'am. Raise it up quickly. Quickly. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Raise it up. Hands are going up everywhere. Be part of it. Join them. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Raise up your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. I want to lead you to this Jesus. The same Jesus, the angel said, the same way you saw him go is the same way he's going to return. Is there any other person that wants to join these people? Please keep your hands up. Somebody else will say, Apostle, I once gave my life to Christ somehow. Don't bring down your hand, keep it up. I once gave my life to Christ somehow I backslid him. I had issues, I had trouble, I had so many things that made me just give up on God and give up on my faith. But I would love to rededicate my life to Jesus. If that is you, join these people and raise your hand quickly. You know that right now you need him. You need, something needs to come back into your life. Something that has left. Thank you. All of you that are raising your hand, please stand up where you are, please. Stand up. You're raising your hand, stand up. Be bold enough, stand up. Stand up. You raised your hand, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Thank you. I want you to do me another favor. Take your bag, your wallet, your cell phone, your personal belonging. Please, I want you to step out and come and join me and the pastors. Come. Please come. Come on, church. Let's celebrate them. Come on. 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 Hallelujah. Oh my God. Are you the one I met yesterday? Oh my God. Praise God. Come on. They're still coming. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Ah, church, you are not celebrating Jesus. Come on. Keep clapping. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Amazing. Thank you for coming out here. What's your name again? Who? Daniel. Now, let me tell you the story. So, I was in pick and pay yesterday evening with Hannah. We went to do groceries. So, I was paying and she asked me for my uh, smart shopper's card. I said, I said, why do you need smart shopper? I am the shopper. I said, bring whatever you are buying. I'll pay for it. She said, no, I can take care of it. I said, I insisted. She says, no. So I gave her my shop, smart shopper's card. I said, but I want to invite you to church. Now, church, I am your pastor. This was at pick and pay. Yesterday. Now, today, she's giving her life to Christ. Is that your son? With her son. Thank you for coming. Thank you. God bless you. All of you that are here, thank you so much for showing up here. First, for even coming to church. And I want to let you know that today, God is changing your story completely. I want you to bow your heads and pray this prayer. Mean it with all your heart. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it like you are serious. Lord Jesus. I believe with all my heart that you are the son of God. You died for me. And on the third day, you rose from the dead. I now receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all of my sins and my past. And I declare boldly that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I reject the devil. 
I denounce Satan and I make a choice to follow Jesus and be a disciple all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Wow. Please, church, stretch your hands towards them. Let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you. The Bible says no man cometh to Jesus except the Father draws him. You have drawn these ones to yourself. Lord, we pray that the grace that brought them out here will preserve them in the kingdom. May your spirit rest upon them. Father, I pray, Lord, that upon their confession in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the resurrection, the Bible says, whosoever sins we remit is remitted. We therefore declare their sins forgiven. Wash their sins away with your blood. Cast it as far as the east from east from the west. If any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I pray that grace for the newness of life is now released into your spirit, man. I speak the blessing of Abraham into your spirit, man. And I break every curse. And I declare from today, you will serve God acceptably. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord preserve you. And may the Lord bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. And the church that believes say, Amen. All right, quickly, just one more thing I need you to do. Follow our sister right there. We want to take your name and your phone number so we can be in touch with you to help you maintain this decision that you have made today. Just go with them two minutes. Give them your name, your phone number. Church, can we celebrate these people as they go? Come on, uh -uh. church, can we celebrate? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Are we blessed in this house? Did you receive the word of God in this house? Somebody say, I am a co-creator with God. Please never, hey church, before I receive the offering, don't look down on yourself. You are not your past. Uh -uh. What did I say? You are not your past. You failed before you are not failure. Failure is an event that happened in your life. It's all part of the script. Keep moving. Eventually, other actors will come that will take you out of that failure. Did you hear the words coming out of my mouth? Nobody here should ever think of killing themselves again, ever. You are just acting a movie. Look at your neighbor say, you are the main actor. Yeah, you will not die. You will not, as the main actor, you will not die. Never. No. Just hang in there. Keep walking with God. Keep coming to church. Keep believing. And in the end, the devil will be put to shame. I know the God I said. I know. I have gone through processes of pain. You guys know my story. When my late wife passed on, I thought it was over. But little did I know that God still restores. That you lost anything does not mean that that is the end. There's a system in the kingdom of God called restoration. Let me promise you today by the word of the Lord, as you live here today, I declare this year your year of restoration. Everything you've lost in the past years, in 2024, may my God and the God that has called me and anointed me for this assignment, may my God restore you in 2024. May my God restore you in 2024. May my God restore you in 2024. Whatever is not working in your life, in your health, in your body, in your business, in your life, I command a restoration now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together for the Lord. All right, let's give Jesus an offering and go home. Amen. Do you have your tithe, your offering? Let's bless the Lord with our substance. Amen. We are givers in this church. Amen. So with, with the next door that is coming up, 
I think we're still praying. One of the days I'm going to raise offering towards that. Amen. So that we can purchase it. Listen, the reason why God blesses us is for his, the kingdom's sake. I hope you know that. Uh -uh, you are not here. It's for the sake of the kingdom. We'll do what we have to do to get it for God. Amen. Listen, church. Life is about giving. I hope you know that life is about giving. You know, it's amazing that the world understands these things more than us. Do you know that right now, uh, what is uh, our election is coming up? We don't know yet what date. But church, do we know when? In May. All right. So let me tell you what some businessmen are doing now. They are sowing seed to political parties. Christians are not. So, let's say uh, three of you come. In fact, four of you come. All right, face the congregation. ANC. <laughs> Pastor KG. Julius Malema. <laughs> DK, Pastor Benji is very controversial. DA, he is very light-skinned. <laughs> he represents the white. Who does that man represent? Cope. Is it Cope? What's the other party that a lot of... Eh? IFP. Eh? Not IFP. There's another party that a lot of white people... Is it led by a black guy? Action XA. Uh -huh. You know? So now, what happens is, now election is coming up. Many businessmen are going, they will drop seed for ANC, drop seed for EFF, drop seed for DA, drop seed for Action SA. Guess what? When they get into power, watch this. When, let's say, Pastor Pumlani, come. You are Oppenheimers. Go and stand there. Kabush. <laughs> So, so he has dropped seed for ANC. Now, when it's time to give tender, when Pastor KG becomes president, listen, you pray in tongues, you come to church, you give tight. When he wants to give contract, who does he give it to? To Brother Oppenheimer. Now, church, all of you go and sit down. This is exactly how the kingdom of God works. When you come to church, the one that gives tithes, does all these things. It does not make sense to anybody that you are giving your 10% and giving offerings. When the time when God wants to do something, the first person he remembers is the one that advanced his kingdom. The one that is serving, tithing, giving his time, giving... Oh, that is how we, the, the, those systems that the parties are using and business people, they learned it from the kingdom. Because as long as the earth remained, seed time and harvest will not see. Whatsoever a man soweth, what happens? That shall he also reap. Lift up your tithes, your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are glad, we are grateful. Thank you for the privilege to give to you. Thank you for this opportunity. We give because we love you. We give because we know that you are our Father. You are our God. Lord, we cherish the relationship we have with you. We thank you and we honor you. According to your word, you said we should not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Therefore, we give this offering. We ask, oh God, as we place it in your hands, Jesus, that may you receive it and multiply it according to your word and make all grace available towards us to abound towards us that we have in all sufficiency in all things shall abound to every good work. Thank you for multiplying our seed soon. According to your word, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, even unto a thousand-fold, we receive our answers and we receive our harvest. In Jesus' name and the church that believes, say, Amen. All right, choir, over to you. There is a race, there are must run, there are victories to be won. Give me power, 
every hour to be true. Oh, there is a race. There are my strong. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. So there is a
of this year, you will rejoice every day. You will celebrate every day. My God. It's time to live a joyful life, man. Look at your neighbor say you are the main actor. Actors don't die. Main actors don't die. So don't give up. Keep moving. Keep serving. Keep coming to church. Prophesy to somebody. Keep giving. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep serving. Keep loving people. Keep winning souls. Are you blessed in this church? One more time, give Jesus praise in this house. Amen. God bless you. I love you all. Please make sure that you prepare for Excel conference. Start inviting people. Let's our posters. I, I think the flyers are going to come out in this week. We need to start inviting people. Start getting prepared for the conference. Our planning committee begins immediately. The meetings begins immediately. Um, you know, so that we can get ready for the conference. Amen, somebody. Are we ready for the conference? You know, this conference, we host the whole world. So we need to be prepared for it spiritually. God bless you. I love you all. May you have a super blessed week. For somebody here today, this week will be the best week of your life. You are coming back on Sunday, this coming Sunday, with major testimonies on your lips. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and may the Lord give you peace. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord prosper the work of your hands. May the Lord protect and preserve you and your family. You are blessed. In Jesus' name and the church say, Amen. God bless you. Have a good week. If today is your first time of coming to House of Traders, please just come forward. We would like to meet and greet you.